All right, Shalom. Want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching His word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp, and um, this one here is going to be a quick hit. I'm in the book of Hebrews, chapter four, verse nine. It says, There remaineth therefore rest to the people of Yahweh. For he that is entered into his rest, he also have ceased from his own works, as Yahweh did from his. All right, now that rest represents salvation. Okay, that represents peace, paradise. Right now, you can clearly see we're not in rest, which also gives understanding that we're not in the new covenant yet because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai promised his people a rest a heaven on earth all right where we're ruling in righteousness and all of his people are in harmony all right and and, and, and basically in one accord you know right now his people are scattered and we're not even well let's say the two-thirds are not even calling themselves the children of the Lord or the sons of the Lord the daughters of the Lord all right so it says for he that is entered into his rest he also have ceased from his own works as Yahweh did from his let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief so in this truth you're gonna have to work all right, there's no free ride. All right, you have to, uh, Paul said, uh, faith without works is dead. So you can say you have faith, but where's your works? Because why? Your works prove your faith. You don't have to say you have faith. Your works prove it. And this is why you see the prophets, the brothers, teaching his word, instant, in season and out of season. You know, constantly enduring. And pushing the truth throughout the four corners of the world. So it says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Because if you're not working, all right, you're going to fall into the example of unbelief. You know, you're going to be distracted of things of the world. You're going to have your mind for the things of the world. How to better yourself, how to further yourself in this world. You know, how do you gain more money? You know, whatever it is your mind is into, you know, so that's why it's important. We have to labor. We have to work toward it. It says, verse 12, for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the word of the Lord, all right, is, is quick and powerful and sharp. You know, his word cuts through your soul. It cuts through your conscience. It makes you think. It makes you move. All right, if you're a person that have a lot of demons on them, you know, your demons are going to manifest through you. It's going to show forth. And if you're a man of the Lord, then guess what? All right, the word of the Lord is going to show forth your righteousness. You're going to speak the things of righteousness. So it says, For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. You know, and this is why people get upset whenever the Lord sends his prophets out to speak. You know, they get bothered by the words that they hear. All right, Jake truly had that problem. The Lord said his people are the stiff-necked and hard-headed rebellious people. You know, when somebody is speaking out and uh, telling truth and speaking on matters that that wicked Jake don't want to hear about, they instantly get mad, you know, and they want to shut that person up. So it says, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the Lord make you think he make you discern, okay, of your thoughts. And then it says, in the intents of your heart, because why? It makes your heart beat, you know? 
you know, people are taught in this world to worship these false gods. And when they come across the men of the Lord and they hear the truth, all right, their hearts, their hearts start racing because what they were taught was a lie. And then they start to question what they believe in. You know, either they're going to be righteous or they're going to be wicked about it. You know, if they're wicked, they're going to defend what they believe in without giving due diligence of research, you know, or believing, you know, in, in the facts, all right, in the truth. And if they're righteous, they're going to admit, they're going to repent. If they're an Israelite, they're going to repent and they're going to humble themselves. So it says, verse 13, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him that whom he have to do. So there's nothing that's hid in the sight of the Lord. Every creature that exists on this planet is manifest in his sight. It says, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with, with whom we have to do. So even your thoughts, okay, the Lord knows your intentions. He knows the end, your inward parts, all right? Nothing is hid from the Lord. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Yahweh Shai, the son of Yahweh, let us hold fast our profession. And who's that high priest? That is Yahweh Shai, all right? He says, let us hold fast our profession. And what is our profession? It's to teach this word, all right? To set in order the Israelites, you know, to do the will of the Father, to speak so that the Lord can will in and bring back his elect to him, all right? It says, verse 15, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin and that was Yahweh Shai you know brother in camp to, uh, this week he said he oversaw a video well he saw a brother video I can't remember who but he said that uh, you got some of these Christians talking about uh, who they believe in Jesus Christ which is supposed to be the son of the most high as they think they said that he had a tattoo, you know, which is uh, a sin. When we know that when Yahweh Shai came into the flesh, he didn't sin. He was perfect. All right. He actually had to pay for his sins and also the sins of Israel. And when did he sin? When he was Solomon. All right. For he that have ears to hear, let him hear if he can receive it. So. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Yahweh Shah showed us that we can do it. He proved that we can strive for righteousness, even if it have to be unto death. That we can conquer, all right, the, the, the evil. That we in sinful flesh can also... You know, strive in righteousness toward Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We can do it. All right. And we're using the uh the power in which the Lord gave us to increase. All right. To basically be that spark plug for us to be lit. You know? So the men of the Lord are lit. You know, and 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 eventually it's gonna come a time where, you know, everyone is gonna wanna be a part of that light. Right now, you know, people pass by the camp, people acknowledge, people don't. You know, everybody's in their own mind, they in their own world, you know, buying and selling, giving into marriage, having pleasure and fun. But when everything stops and your life is on the line and it's time to survive, to be as a pilgrim, they're going to be looking for a miracle, you know. The miracle comes from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, the brother elder uh, Amawan Gabar in the main camp, he uh, pulled out that definition, which was, you know, a stick with me, the pilgrim. You know, when you etymology it, it's not just a man or a family or who that travels. 
is also someone who looks for a miracle and who's truly the pilgrims of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, the Lord's elect, starting with the prophets. He said to live in, in the Apocrypha, it says to what? Be as pilgrims in that day. All right. Meaning what? To travel and also to look for the miracle. We're going to need a miracle to get out of this hell that the Lord is about to bring on the earth. All right, starting with Esau, but then eventually his judgments that he's sending forth, okay, upon the wicked. So, it says, uh, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. So, how do you come boldly? You know, when you hear boldly, you think proud. You think someone is being proud. Being boldly. And which Paul is speaking about, it's not being proud, it's being blameless. You know, now is the time, you know, to seek mercy of the Lord, you know, to hope that he forgive of your sins, you know, the renewing of your mind, okay, transforming from wickedness into righteousness, you know, truly, truly repenting, being sincere. So therefore, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. All right, you're not with shame, with your head down, you know, you you're what ifing, you know, you're not you you you, 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 you uh what you, how should I say you uh, ye of little faith, you know, you don't know not, not now all of a sudden you don't know, when before you were saying yeah you how about me I was shot, you know, but you don't know and you have little faith because why you doubt, you doubt, all right. Because you lack faith. You lack faith because why? Your sins. All right? Your sins will hold you back. The scriptures speak on that. Second Andrew 16. Let not your sins weigh you, weigh you down. All right? So, as Paul says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. You know, when you do everything that you could do in your power that the Lord gave you, according to your ability and talent, and you give it all you got, when, when it's out of your power to, to escape, you call upon Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. And the Lord truly knows that you need a miracle. He, he, know, he knows that he needs to help you to get through it. So it says that we may obtain mercy. It's all about mercy, man. You know, a lot of God's going to be punished, man. You know, it's a lot of Israelite camps out there with different doctrines. You know, with pride, you know, you got your congregation in folly, you know, giving into marriage. You're trying to build a community, build upon Esau's kingdom where the Lord is tearing this bitch down. Y'all niggas are crazy, man. So for the whole four elect, continue to keep putting those prayers up. And let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. And Lord's willing that will be the title of the lesson. That we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help in a time of need. We're all going to be needy, you know. And the Lord's elect, like he said in, uh, what's that, Isaiah 65 and 11. He said, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. My servant shall uh, uh, eat, but you shall be hungered. You know, so, you know, Lord's willing, we of those, those men, okay, we of that, that elect, that in a day of great judgment, we rejoice. So I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, salutations to the Lord's elect, Shalom.